morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to present the, the work of title effects of the operating conditions on the performance of a dual fuel diesel engine running with gas from biomass specification, whose authors are Hernandez, Soriano, and I, Javier Barba. We belong to the fuel scientist group of the University of Castilla-La Mancha. The presentation is divided into four main parts, introduction, experimental setup and materials, results, and conclusions. Diesel engines have two main challenges in the future. On the one hand, it's necessary to reduce fossil fuels consumption due to its depletion, more and more elevated prices, and the continuous dependence on foreign country. On the other hand, it's also necessary to reduce pollutant emissions, concretely nitrogen oxides emissions, ENOx emissions from this point forward, and particulate matter emissions, PM emissions from this point forward, which are the main emissions in a diesel engine and cause the, the pollutant in the rural areas. One of the possibilities is to replace part of the diesel fuel to producer gas, by producer gas. So this kind of operation mode is called dual fuel mode or dual fuel engine. In this engine, gas's fuel is mixed with air in the intake manifold. For, la for latin being introduced in the combustion chamber in the admission stroke. This mixture of air and producer gas is compressed and finally both fuels are simultaneously burned, starting the combustion with the liquid fuel. The main advantage of this kind of mode or engines is the use of a renewable fuel, lower costs, fuel flexibility, and lower pollutant emissions. Among all the renewable gaseous fuels, we have chosen the biomass specification gas, also called producer gas. This gas uh, has all the advantages related with the use of biomass, such as economical and social development of rural areas, alternative to waste management, reduction of CO2 emissions, and energy diversification. One of the main techniques for the energy use of biomass is gasification, in which a, mix, a gas mixture of hydrogen, methane, ethane, CO, nitrogen, and CO2 mainly is obtained. The conditions in which we have obtained our producer gas, our the gasification parameters are, are shown in the table. The type of gasifier has been an entrained flow, Gasifying A and steam, steam biomass ratio 2.59, and the biomass use dealcoholized Markov grape. With these conditions, we have obtained a producer gas composition in which is remarkable the CO percentage, 28%, and the hydrogen percentage, 26%. This is the facility in which we have carried out the test. It's a uh, two liters single cylinder diesel engine. And it's necessary to, to carry out some modifications. We have the producer gas in a synthetic bottle with the composition we have obtained in advance in the gasifier. And it's also necessary to have a system to, to control the flow rate and the temperature of the producer gas. The tests have been divided into two main blocks. On the one hand, we have varied the start of injection from minus 20 before top the center to top the center, keeping constant the rest of parameters, such as intake pressure, torque, intake temperature, and replacement, which is defined as the diesel fuel energy replaced by producer gas, in this case. Once we obtain an optimum start of injection, we vary the torque of the engine and the replacement, and keeping constant the rest of parameters such as intake temperature. We start with the results. In these graphs, 
we can see the brake thermal efficiency and the brake specific fuel consumption versus start of injection. It's observed a lower brake thermal efficiency in dual fuel mode due to unburned producer gas escaping from combustion chamber. It can also be observed a higher brake specific fuel consumption in dual fuel mode due to also the unburned producer gas escaping from combustion chamber and also due to the lower heating value. There is an optimum point at around minus 12 before top of center due mainly to the combustion is centered around top of the center as can be seen with the start of combustion and end of, of combustion. It has also been measured the total hydrocarbon emissions and carbon monoxide emissions versus the start of injection. Higher total hydrocarbon and CO emissions running on dual fuel mode are obtained due to the unburned hydrocarbon and CO escaping from combustion chamber. CO emissions also come from methane partially oxidized. It's also found an optimal point around minus 12 before top of the center for these emissions, which is consistent with the results obtained previously. Particular matter emissions increase as approaching top of the center, and on the other hand, NOx emissions decrease as approaching top of the center. Lower NOx NOx emissions running on dual fuel mode are obtained due to the lower adiabatic flame temperature of fluid gas comparing to diesel fuel, as can be seen in this figure. Once we obtain a, a start of injection optimum, in, which is minus 12, due to the highest value for brake thermal efficiency, lowest value for brake specific fuel consumption, and also the lowest total hydrocarbons and CO emissions. Once we have choose the start of injection, we have buried the torque, 60, 90, and 105, and the replacement up to 20, keeping constant the rest of parameters of engine. In these figures, we can observe the brake thermal efficiency and brake specific fluid consumption versus replacement where it's observed the lower brake thermal efficiency and higher brake specific fuel consumption as, repl as replacement increases at all engine loads. We also can observe that working at high loads improves brake thermal efficiency and brake specific fuel consumption due to higher third temperatures enhance the gaseous fuel combustion. We have also measured the total hydrocarbon emissions and the carbon monoxide emissions, which are higher as diesel replacement increases at all engine loads. Here we can also observe that working at high loads enhance the gases fuel combustion, reducing these emissions. CO emissions are due to unburned CO and also are due to partially oxidized hydrocarbons. Finally, we have observed that there is a sharp decrease of the PN emissions due to hydrogen does not generate PMs, and methane is the lowest member of the paraffin family, and therefore has a small tendency to, to generate PMs. We can also observe that working at high loads increases PM emissions. On the other hand, NOx emissions are lower running on dual fuel mode because, because of producer gas has a lower adiabatic flame temperature, as we said before. Uh, we can also observe that working at high loads reduce a specific NOx emissions. Finally, the main conclusions of these words are as follows. The start of injection at minus 12 before top of the center seems to be an optimum operation point. High loads improve the gaseous fuel combustion. Total hydrocarbon and CO emissions increases with diesel fuel replacement due to unburned gaseous fuel. Brake thermal efficiency is lower running on dual fuel mode due to unburned gaseous fuel. 
and NOx and PM emissions are lower when running on dual fuel mode. Thank you very much. If you have any questions.